armamentarium for this procedure includes a rubber dam, floss, high and low speed hand pieces, a number 330 burr, a number 2 or number 4 round burr, tapered diamond burr or flame finishing burr, wedges, clear plastic or metal sectional matrix, etch, bond, resin composite, plastic composite instrument, explorer, and mirror, curing light, polishing kit, and articulating. The general considerations for this procedure include preparations need to be conservative because primary teeth have large pulps proportionally when compared with permanent teeth. Caries may extend subgingival, so isolation and hemorrhage control is essential. The axial wall depth should be 0.5 millimeters into dentin. It is necessary to break contact gingivally and with lingual walls, but the incisal contact does not necessarily need to be broken. Bevel the cable surface margin 0.5 millimeters. A dovetail or lock, especially if the child is a bruxer, can be placed on the facial or lingual surface. However, do not extend greater than halfway across the chosen surface and stay in the middle horizontal one-third, although the preparation may extend cervically if caries extend. Create the outline form and remove caries with a number 330 burr in the high-speed handpiece using a facial access. The axial wall is ideally placed 0.5 millimeters into dentin. A number two or number four round burr in the low speed handpiece can be used to remove deep decay. The gingival and lingual walls should just break contact with the adjacent tooth. In order to maintain adequate tooth structure, it is not necessary to break contact with the incisal wall of the prep. To enhance retention, a dovetail or lock can be placed on the facial or lingual surface. However, do not extend greater than halfway across the chosen surface and stay in the middle horizontal one-third, although the preparation may extend cervically if caries extend there. Place a short 0.5 mm bevel at the cable surface margin. This may be accomplished with a fine tapered diamond or with a flame-shaped composite finishing burr. Clean and dry the preparation with water and compressed air. Place a clear plastic or metal sectional matrix interproximally and reinsert the wedge. Most plastic matrices will have to be first cut in half horizontally because they are manufactured for permanent teeth and are too wide for primary teeth. Etch the preparation for 15 to 20 seconds, then rinse and dry the preparation well. Open consepsis and dry with air. Place a dentin bonding agent in the preparation. Gently blow compressed air into the preparation to disperse a thin layer of bonding agent evenly over both dentin and enamel. Polymerize the bonding agent. Use flowable composite to fill the box portion of the preparation. With a plastic instrument or pressure syringe, place composite in the preparation. Pull the matrix tightly around the cavity preparation with finger pressure and hold until cured. Hold the visible light as closely as possible to the composite and polymerize according to the manufacturer's instructions. The light should be directed from both the facial and lingual surfaces to ensure complete polymerization. Avoid looking directly at the polymerization light when it is turned on. Finish and polish immediately following polymerization. Floss the inner proximal areas to check for overhangs and to remove excess glaze material. The goals for this preparation are a smooth and flowing outline, proximal and gingival contacts properly broken, cable surface angles appropriately beveled, Pulpal and axial floor depths are appropriate. Internal to walls are smooth and well-defined. Line angles are rounded and no damage to the adjacent tooth. The goals for the restoration include anatomy that is consistent and harmonious with the tooth structure, proper proximal contour and shape, the absence of flash, restoration is smooth and without pits, voids, or irregularities, proper occlusion, 
correct shade, and no soft tissue damage. Common errors include preparing the cavity too deep, which potentially exposes the pulp, undercutting the enamel, which leads to fracture and open margins, not removing composite resin flash from the cavo surface margins, a poor color match, and debonding due to inadequate bonding procedure or lack of mechanical retention.